Good morning, friends. It's time for another QA. And it's a personalized QA. It's from a couple of people that sent me some emails. One of them gave me permission to identify him. The other one is one chooses to be anonymous, and I can respect that. And I'm going to get started on this as soon as I come back. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. I want to start off by saying that I received an email the other day, one day last week, from a couple people asking me questions, and I'm kind of running out of questions for the weekly QA series, so I guess that's going to slow down for a while. The first email is from Pedro Blanco. Hi, Pedro. I'm not sure where he's located, but not that it really matters at this point. Uh, he has seven questions, and I'm going to answer those for him now. And then I have another eight questions from somebody that wants to be anonymous. So let's get started. Before we get started, I would like to say if you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. And if you want to know about the next video that I post, ring that bell right there. Okay, so let's get started. How many times have you used USA Valet? From these questions here, from seven questions that Pedro was asking, most of it's about USA Valet. If you're not familiar with USA Valet, USA Valet is a shipping company in, well, they're located in Cuenca here in Ecuador, and they have a drop box in Miami. It's an excellent company. They've been around for a number of years. I don't know exactly how many years. As a matter of fact, the first question that Pedro's asked me is how many times have you used them? No, that's not the first question. He asked me how long have they been in business? I don't know. I don't know. It's a great shipping company if you have goods that need to be shipped to Ecuador from the U.S. Small goods, you know. Uh, not like refrigerators and stoves and stuff like that, but small items like a laptop or some mail or a camera or something like that. Uh, you can use USA Valet and save yourself a lot of shipping money, okay? So the first question, how many times have you used USA Valet? I think I've used them five times. I just had to think about this. I know I've used them at least five times. I've used them to ship stuff for me personally three times, and two times I've done a consolidated shipment where I had neighbors uh, get together with neighbors and we place an order on Amazon. We all ship it to Miami, and then we all split the cost of the shipping, which is really a good way to do it. If you if you if you're here in Ecuador and you have friends that are here also and you want to buy something from Amazon or Costco or anybody in the U.S. and you want to uh, split the cost, this is the way to do it. And you can use USA Valet to ship your goods over here, then you guys can get together and share the cost. But I believe five times, Pedro, I've used them three times for my own personal stuff. And two times where we, I, you know, gathered, uh, we shared the shipping with um, other people. Uh, number two, you mentioned registering for an account. Is it a monthly subscription in addition to or simply pay as you go only? No, it's not a subscription service. It's not at all. It's you pay as you go. There is a service fee that you pay for the first shipment of the month. Okay, and any multiple shipments after that first month or after that first shipment in that month, you don't have to pay any more additional service fees. Uh, I think it's $25 if I remember right. It's All of it's explained on the website. Uh, and by the way, I, I am going to put a link to the website in the description below and for you. And I'll tell you what, I'll even do better than that. I've done a couple of other videos about USA Valet, shipping goods to the US, or shipping goods to Ecuador from the U.S., I'll put a link to those episode numbers in the description below. Number three, I believe you mentioned items from Amazon going to Miami. Have you been able to stay a Prime member? Well, me personally, no. I, I canceled my Prime membership. I didn't see any need for it anymore because I don't ship. When I was living in the States, I was buying stuff from Amazon almost daily. It paid to be a Prime member, and I'm just not a Prime member anymore. And I don't really buy that much stuff from Amazon any, 
anymore, so I don't see any sense in it. It doesn't. You don't have to be a prime member to shift to Miami. By the way, the the, the Miami address is just another U.S. address, as far as you and Amazon are concerned. As far as you and Amazon are concerned, your home address is this address that you get for USA Valet in Miami. So, you know, no, it doesn't have anything to do with Prime membership. Number four, I know Ecuador isn't part of Amazon's Prime mail program. I didn't know that Amazon had a mail program, but if you're going, if you're if you're still a Prime member, are you able to stream the Amazon original programming? Yes, of course. Uh, you, I believe, I'm not sure, but I think you have to have a VPN. I have a VPN. I use a VPN. I've never really tried it without the VPN, but I don't stream anything without being on my VPN anyway. But oh, good morning, Fido. Here comes Fido. Somebody's walking their dog, so now I get to hear Fido barking. I wish I had a brick. I hate to fall off this porch while I'm doing this video. I'd probably break my hip. That would be bad. Number five. Do you plan to post future videos detailing what you would have paid for your sneakers or X item to be shipped via DHL and how it worked out in your favor with USA Valet? I already did a video on that. I think it's episode 15. I don't remember what episode it is. It's, an, it's one of my earlier episodes. I don't know what the episode number is. Oh, okay. I'll put it in the description, okay? there In the description, there is an episode number where I talk about just such a thing, okay? and Because I don't remember off the top of my head, but I know one thing. I saved myself a lot of money. It cost me, I think my order... I'm just going to round off numbers here. My Amazon order was like $130, and it cost me like $230 to have my order shipped via DHL. No, I, I used FedEx in that case, and it, it came here to Monta. I had to go and pick it up. I had to pay an outrageous fee for paperwork, they said. It's like $54 or something like that. And I asked them, what is this for? And it's like, paperwork. <laughs> so, and, and then I walked home with the item. I think the package was about eight pounds when I picked it up. By the time I got home with it, it felt like it weighed 50 pounds. But look at the episode, the description. In the description is the episode number for that video where you can get those numbers, okay? Number six. Do you know how long they've been in business? Okay, that was the... I, I don't know. I, I sent an email to Judy and asked her, but she hasn't answered me by the time I got ready to do this video. I, you know, I, 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 I have no clue. I don't know. They've been in business long enough to suit me. And when I first started with them, I was a little concerned about, you know, the safety and security of my items getting here. But... And I think the first thing I ordered, I don't remember what it was, but it was something inexpensive. And if it never made it, I didn't really have any major concern about it. And But it did make it. And my second order was a laptop. And that was uh, like an $1,800 laptop. And it took about three weeks and it got here safe and sound. So I don't know how long they've been in business, but they've been in business long enough to... They have their act together and they know what they're doing and I don't know of any problems. Number seven, last question from Pedro. After Amazon delivers it to Miami, do you receive delivery tracking updates from them en route from Miami to Monta? You, you don't get anything from Amazon. The only tracking you get from Amazon is from the Amazon distribution center to uh, USA Valet and Miami. USA Valet does not have a tracking system that I'm aware of to where you can track your order from the time it hits Miami until the time it arrives in Monta. Okay? I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't, you know, I'd like to say that they do, but they, they don't. It takes about three weeks. The only time I saw any delay in that was right around Christmas time, and I think that just added about another three or four days to it. So, 
I hope that answers your questions, Pedro. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop me another email, and I'll do the best I can. So, from Anonymous, got a little bit of reading to do here. Anonymous, his questions are quite lengthy. My current employer only offers remote work. However, I'm obligated to use their hardware. This is a double-edged sword. If I were in Ecuador, if and when the PC eventually dies or needs servicing, this presents a problem. Well, I'll stop you right there. No, it's not a problem. Their service center is computer repair center is all over Ecuador. There's several here in Monta. There's all the major cities have computer repair centers, so that may not be such a problem, okay? But I think I know where you're going with this question. I'd be on a clock. My thumb was in the way. I'd be on a clock where I wouldn't get paid and could be slapped with a performance issue if, an unable, if unable to work for more than a few days. If I'm looking to quickly return a PC laptop to my employer and manage to have a, a Miami stamp on it, this person must already know about USA Valet. Uh, what would you or any of your viewers suggest? Obviously, this is only half of the dragon. When my employer mails it back to the Miami address, what can I do to expedite the shipment back to me safely in Ecuador? I definitely give you the okay to read this, blah, 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 blah. okay. So, I, I don't think, so USA Valet ships to Ecuador every two weeks. I don't think you can get expedited shipping services from them. You can write to Judy and ask her, you know, at the email from their website or contact us address and ask them if they have expedited services. I would hope that in this case, if, you, if you're here and you have an employer's laptop with you and it breaks down and you have to ship it back to the U.S., I would suggest you just use DHL. Sorry, Judy, but, you know, he will need, he or she will need expedited shipping and it's going to be costly but let your employer pay for that uh, also just as a side note if you're going to have a laptop sent here be sure to have them ship a surge protector with you okay a backup battery surge protector so because the power goes off here a lot and if you're on your laptop and you're working the power goes off your surge protector will keep it going long enough to you to get it shut down. Don't 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 think of USA Valet for expedited services, okay? If that's what you're getting at. You said Miami twice here, so I'm assuming that you know about USA Valet. These both of these letters are almost you'd think these people know each other. Yeah, you definitely in that case you would use DHL, I would suggest it. Okay. The next question, I learned in some of your earlier videos you worked in an IT capacity prior to return. I've worked remotely in the U.S. for 10 years. I can work anywhere in the U.S., but my employer waffles on giving me the international okay. In the past, they seem to get hung up on taxes and banking. However, I'm typically unable, I'm typically able to explain with success that I'm not trying to dodge anything. It might seem childish. However, I have to be a broken record on this because it's quickly forgotten. They just seem to think once one lives outside the U.S., one is renouncing their citizenship. Prior to the pandemic, they gave me the go-ahead for six months. If, I went, if it went well, my performance, they'd extend it. However, once the pandemic started this change, they became somewhat draconian on this topic. Don, could you please assist me or make any helpful suggestions on the following? And there's some more questions here. In the first place, I want to say just because you're moving to another country doesn't necessarily mean you're renouncing your U.S. citizenship. I don't know if you plan to do that. It's not an automatic. You don't just automatically lose your citizenship because you retire in Ecuador, okay? I've had a couple of people suggest that. And no, folks, it's a very major process to renounce your citizenship. And I can't imagine why anybody would want to do that especially if you're on Social Security. So the first question related to all of this was how effective do you think a VPN would be to allow me to log on to my company's intranet without sending up red flags? It would be perfect. To me, I, I, it's a given. When you come to Ecuador 
And if you're going to use computers and you're even going to watch TV here, uh, you need a VPN. So get, make that part of your plans, okay? I, if your your employer, you know, intranet, an intranet basically is a VPN. Uh, it's very secure, uses point-to-point -point tunneling, pro PPTP, point-to-point -point tunneling protocols. But I don't know if, if your company, I don't know who you're working for, but I don't know that your company will uh, allow the intranet the company's VPN system to reach all the way to Ecuador. They'd have to have a service here in Ecuador for that to work. I'm sure some IT guy is going to come here and correct me on this, but I would say have your own VPN, like ExpressVPN, NordVPN, a Viper VPN, which is what I use, and use it to connect to your US VPN at your company. That's that's the way to do it. If you have any questions about that and want more detail, get in touch with me and I'll give you a call, okay? And we'll talk about it and I'll explain. I've worked remotely from South America previously. However, this was done to allow me a few extra weeks to extend my time out of the country. I never received a call from anyone in IT asking, are you logging in from South America? I'm not ready to retire yet and would like to keep this job for at least two more years. However, I'm seriously considering putting the house on the market, moving to Ecuador, no container, just minimal like yourself. Based upon your knowledge and professional experience, if I were to say to my employer, my new permanent address would be in Miami virtual mail service, and I were to pick a VPN with a Miami login, how long would it take for my employer to catch on? Am I being overly naive to think they might never catch on. No, I don't think so. I'm never going to suggest to any of my viewers that they're naive, but I don't think, I think you're kind of putting too much into this. I think if you're, if you're on a VPN and you're connecting to a VPN server in Miami, which is where I connect all the time, the whole internet thinks I'm in Miami. The, the internet doesn't even know I'm in Ecuador. Unless there's some logging function that I don't know about, I don't see how that's going to be an issue for you. If you're on a VPN, your employer most likely is not going to know that you're on a VPN. I don't think you need to worry about this. I really don't. I think you're making this a bigger thing than it really is, okay? Do you know of any successful tips to ensure a VPN will consistently show I'm logging in from Miami, Florida, USA IP address? Do I know of any successful tips? I do know... I think I tried to subscribe to Hulu one time, and even when I was on my VPN, I think it was Hulu, they came back and said a proxy IP address was detected, which means that's what you would see if you're on a VPN, and they would not allow me to subscribe to the service. It was either Hulu or it was one of those, one of those paid TV services. But that's the only time I've ever seen it. Most people, I'd say 99.99% .99 of the people that I connect with in the States don't even know I'm on a VPN. They think I'm in Miami if they think anything at all. If they track, trace my IP address, I guess you can go to ICANN and find out where IP addresses are based and know that, well, it's okay, this person's in Miami, so, so what? Big deal. I don't think there's going to be any problem with that either. Is there anything you'd suggest in addition to or instead of a VPN? No. A VPN is the way to go. And by the way, I pay $60 for three years of service with my VPN service. 60 bucks for three years. I think ExpressVPN is a little more. They seem to me like I checked into ExpressVPN once and they were like, Fifteen dollars a month or something like that, and I didn't. I didn't want that. But they may have come down since then. Don't quote me on that, folks. Okay, I'm not saying that ExpressVPN is fifteen dollars a month, but it just seemed to me like they were a little pricey in my for my budget. I think that they're probably one of the most popular VPN services out there. Look into it. Do your own research on that. Look in the Google. Okay. Question number seven. I'm not concerned about promotions or pricing, but rather consistent safe logins which don't send up red flags that's that's put that thought out of your mind okay is there a VPN service you believe to be a better fit for someone who isn't simply trying to change their region code 
for a video streaming service. No, they all do the same thing. I don't think anyone really, to tell you the truth, is any better than the other. Maybe, maybe some are. I use Viper VPN. I don't have any troubles with them. If I lose my connection in Miami, I just go to Austin. If I lose my connection in Austin, I switch back to Miami. I can go to Chicago, New York, LA. I, I connect to Miami because it, I look on the map and it looks closer. I think Austin's probably, Austin's straight that way from here because that's north. I don't know which is closer, but I don't think that's going to be a, an issue either, okay? The last question related, my employer requires us to use a free application called Dual. It is essentially, it essentially sends us a code each time we log in. It also works in South America. If the device receiving the code, typically a phone, is connected with the VPN, Will I have little to be concerned about? Or is the dual app inconsequential even if the device is connected without a VPN? We used dual when I was at American. I believe you register a phone number with dual. I would have a WhatsApp number and register your dual with your WhatsApp number. You know, and unless your company allows international calling with dual, I would just do, I would register a WhatsApp number with them. And as long as you're on, you're on your, VPN, again, they're not going to know what country you're in. Dual doesn't care where you are because when you set up Dual, you register a phone number with it. Just like you register a phone number with WhatsApp. And then WhatsApp works over the web. And if you're on a VPN, then you have a point-to-point -point tunnel between you and your employer. So if you, have, if you really want to elaborate on any of these, I'm talking to both you, Pedro, and the anonymous user here, feel free to ask more questions, put them in the comment section, or you can feel free to email me and uh, we can get into, uh, it, uh, talk about it as much as you want to, okay? So, on a cloudy morning here in Mata, Ecuador, that wraps this one up. I will see you in the next video, which, by the way, is going to be an interview and uh, hopefully it's going to be uh, somewhat entertaining for you. See you in the next video.